G'day fellas, and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the north side of the map in the color teal, playing as the Chinese. It's Crackity here's second alt account. <laughs> I do like his names, they're quite good. Crackity here, Crackity there, Crackity, Crackity everywhere. And on the south of the map, playing as the Ottomans in the color yellow, he's currently rank one. He's currently rank two, and he is also rank three on the ladder. He's impressive, that is for sure, ladies and gentlemen. It is Beastie Cutie. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're here on Dry Arabia once again, witnessing a classic matchup. I say a classic matchup because I'm a China main through and through, and I love this matchup. I love it for China. I tell you what, I find it very difficult playing as Ottomans against China in this matchup. I just don't know what the right answer is. I just feel like China's got an answer for everything uh, that the Ottomans do, and they just really don't have anything to throw out in response. Chukunu, very strong unit, but and do very well uh, against them. Uh, you can actually get away with the two town center Song Dynasty before the Ottoman attack even comes out. But we do have some early aggression going to be going the way of Beastie Cutie. As he drops down the military school, military school, Spearman making its way across the map, going to be looking to isolate the potential gold mine or the stone mine. These are going to be the two big factors here. So I'm curious to see what way Crackity looks to play this because quite honestly, he can just pretty much play it anyway and he's going to be in a good position. The ball is definitely in the court uh, of Beastie to, to stop him. So Beastie's got a couple of options. Now, the most common way that you do see Ottomans played, at least in the old the old days, I say the old days like it was a long time ago. I'm, you know, I'm talking a couple of weeks ago, was the Feudal Age Ottoman. You know, the Ottoman that... Uh, that loves to get out there and just make a, a, f a few arches, occasional arches, get the meta out, get the meta drums going. But we have seen a progression in Ottoman strategy. So that, that's the first one, that, that Feudal Age uh, attack. The, the second type is the Fast Castle. And to be honest, I think I prefer the Fast Castle. And I think against China, you can probably almost always get away with a Fast Castle. The question is going to be whether you can actually keep up with China because... Ottoman Fast Castle, it is a beast. It is a behemoth, but it takes a little bit to get online. At its very core, there's a mangonel. There is a mangonel. And I think the question is, are you going to be able to get up your... Uh, are you going to be able to get up your uh, landmark? Or rather, are you going to get the gold for your landmark before the Chukunu come? Because the Chukunu will come eventually. They will look to hit gold mines. Depends what type of style Crackety is looking to play. But Crackety is normally known as a bit of a one-base China. He can play two-base. He, he knows how to play two-base. He just prefers one-base. One-base games are a little bit quicker. A little bit more cutthroat. A little bit more... I, I, I would say all-in, but it's really not all-in with China because you do have that extra build speed on your villagers. So you are just really just popping off like crazy with those villagers. But we do now see Imperial Academy is coming mm -hmm. up for Crackity. It's a beautiful spot. Absolutely beautiful spot. One of the best Imperial Academies you'll ever get. Uh, and the reason why this is so good is because he's got the mill next to the Imperial Academy. He's got the mining camp next to the Imperial Academy. And his lumber camp is going to be right next to the Imperial Academy. Which means that he doesn't need to allocate a villager, or rather a, a um, Imperial official, to collect gold. He can supervise with all of them as long as his macro is good enough. And he will be able to collect gold. All of his, uh, all of his gold, all of his resources back here, nice and safely. But we do see the Imperial Academy is coming down on the other side of the map. Beastie going to be dropping down the Twin Minaret Madrasa. A real surprise there. A lot of players have been moving towards this landmark. We've seen it picked about 99% of the time. One game, Salami did play uh, and it looked to go for the, uh, the Sultan Honey Trade Network. It worked pretty well. In fact, uh, it kind of opened my eyes to how the landmark should actually be used. But I still think the Twin Minaret Madrasa is better. Food is just such a valuable resource. Spearman, he's going to have a short life. It was a good life, but it was a short life. Beastie, unfortunately, looking away at the wrong time. Maybe missing a unit from a control group. A little bit of a mistake right there coming out from the beast. The beast from the east. Do we call him the beast from the east? Probably not. I mean, he's not really from the east, is he? He's, he's more southerly. Southerly, look at him. But now we see Crackety actually scouting out... What beast he's up to. He's looking and he's saying, okay, no vills on gold. So not going for any kind of fast castle shenanigan. That's fine. But there are some vills here on stone. That's four vills as well. Four vills on stone is kind of, kind of thinking like, is that a second town center? That, that's, let's have a look here. We don't really know, but that, that four vills is, is more than enough. Oh my Lord. We've got ourselves a barbican rush, ladies and gentlemen. It is happening. But is beastie going to be able to spot it? That's going to be the question. Has Crackety managed to sneak these villagers? 
completely blindly against Beastie. And right now, because if you, all, you, all you need to do here is just Barbican the gold. Outpost these golds here. And it's going to be a very sad story for Beastie. Look at this. Pixel perfect. Pixel perfect. You couldn't... One, one tile closer and it gets spotted. He just knows. He just knows. Crackity, very, very good at this kind of thing. Always loves to play a little bit of cheese. A little bit of Chinese cheese. Chinese not famous for their cheese. Does get spotted out, but it's way too late. And immediately we receive the response coming in. It was going to be... You can see that Beastie, he was thinking about going for a second town center. I think he still is thinking about going for a second town center. And this is kind of ballsy, right? Like going for a second town center here against China, where you're getting Barbican rushed. And now a lot of people look at this Barbican and they're, they're like, okay, well, it's just a Barbican. I'm not worried. You should be worried because the Barbican, and this is something that I've talked about for quite a while, serves as a staging ground. And if Crackety so chooses, and I suspect he will choose to, He's going to play one base, but he's going to play it from the comfort of his Barbican. There was actually a stage where I was testing with Imperial, a forward Imperial Academy. And basically, we would put the Imperial Academy forward and the Barbican forward. And you would build up your production up there as well. That way, you could collect it. Didn't work out in the long run. It's much more efficient doing this. But we do have the first of the Archery Rangers coming through. It's going to be Chukunu coming in. And Beastie will hear the first point coming in. The Meta Drums. He opts for. No real surprise there. He's got plenty of food back here. Nice and safe for him. The main concern he's going to have, though, is that there could be outpost creep, out, outpost crawl. Be Beastie moving forward, looking like he wants to drop an outpost himself. Now, this outpost does two things. Number one, it stops the flow of Chokunu. Or Chukunu. Uh, and number two is it prevents this gold from being gathered by his enemy. But the Chukunu are coming out strong. It looks like Beastie might get this one up. Jeez, he's having a tough time, actually, isn't he? The Chukunu numbers are looking pretty solid already. The outpost is going to go up. And Crackety seeds. Seeds? Concedes? I think we I think we can say he concedes. He concedes this position. Probably going to have to head back over to a wood line or a mill somewhere. It's a nice little spot right there for him, if he considers it. I think he's just going to go for a lumber camp. It's going to be the lumber camp. But now Beastie on the defensive. He's got everything he's got you know, at this point, it is A-OK, -okay, right? Like, this is what he wants. The problem is this Barbican, okay? Because the the way that you beat the Chukunu is through m massive masses of archers taking out the Spearman and then the Sparhi coming in with the, the assistance of the meta. That's going to be the main way that you defeat it. And the problem that you're going to have is that Barbican means that you can never get in underneath because the Barbican will always be out there firing on onto that meta and firing onto the Sparhi. Beastie does, despite this early aggression, despite the double, the double archery range and forward Barbican, he decides to go for a second town center. So this is definitely a, a very bold, ambitious beastie that's coming out, a greedy beastie. But at the same time, he understands his win condition. He says, well, hold on. I know China's going to be escaping me when it comes, on the, it comes to the village account. You can already see right now, 37 economic pop. Now, granted, some of this is going to be in Imperial officials. And we see there's three back here. So you can minus three off that. It's 35 versus 31. But still, Beastie knows that I, I, I can't play on the clock against China. It's just not possible. They're always going to outscale. So I've got to go for the second town center. And he does that. But... I fear that he may have fallen into a little bit of danger. Because behind this, Crackety's bought some time. He's bought some time that his Chukunu, early Chukunu, don't die to any kind of spar he attacks because of the Barbican. And now he's bought time for the Barracks. And we see Barracks comes up. Harden Spearman also going to be coming through here. Look at all the tax he's got up the front. The consequence of going for these this early aggression and putting your production on the front line is that none of that tax is going to be collectible. It's all just chilling out back here. He's still got some pretty good gold coming through from him. 330 gold income. Battering ram moving forward. I don't think Beastie's got the units to deal with this. Couple of Sparhi, but even then he just decides to give it up, knowing that the Chukunu are sitting by. He's got the line of sight. And Crackety's numbers continue to build. Military looking pretty even, but remember, Beastie's got that second town center now, so he's going to be catching up slowly but steadily to Crackety. Behind this, Beastie also doing a little bit of a counterattack. Look at this. We got a villagers. Villagers getting caught out of position. They're forced away. Interestingly, decide to avoid this gold mine at the front. And now Beastie. 
looking to push out. Just remember that Barbican is here. And that could make all the difference. We enter into the cinematic mode as Beastie looks to try and pick a fight. The meta going to be moving up as well. It gets absolutely, it gets one shot. The true Kunu just so damn strong. Spearman making their way forward. They're going to get themselves picked off as well, but he's just got way too many units. Villager's going to be focused down. And here we see Crackety buying himself time against this two town center. Waiting for it to, to pay off. Beastie's going to be making as many of those villagers as he can. Needs to try and keep them alive. Look at the Chukunu, just so damn strong. Beastie in a bit of a tough spot. If he loses this match, he could lose this game. This is not a good position for him to be in. Military school number one goes down. Second one going to begin, be, begin getting focused down. Beastie needs to pull villagers to burn down these ramps. The, the consequence of losing the meta here is that it all goes downhill. Had that meta been alive, it would mean that the trades here would just be so much better for these archers. Look at Cracky baiting away. These villagers trying to pull them towards the front line, and he does it. Now going to be able to one-shot the rest of the villagers. Crackety just cleaning up villagers, cleaning house completely. China getting massive value here. Remember behind this, the Song Dynasty is going to be pumping out villagers as well. So Crackety, even though he seems all in on this front line, he's not. He's not. He's up nine economic units. Once again, I do remind you that the Imperial official number is going to drastically affect that. We see two Imperial officials out. I don't know how to check it. I don't know how, how to check how many Imperial officials are out. Actually, there's a third one. I think I think there's just two. So he's up a fair amount. We'll just, ass just assume that's right. You know, 47 versus 37. Beastie, he's behind. But remember, he's got all the tools that he needs to get back on board. And now we see the Archery Rangers. Now, the key here for Beastie in this matchup is going to be the meta. He needs to keep the meta al alive. He needs to look for his upgrades. And he needs to keep the meta on defense that's going to be the, the the main thing that's going to keep him alive here and losing that meta early on for beastie is really going to cost him he's already spent 250 resources on putting down this military school he's lost it he's going to have to look elsewhere but we see him looking to move even more villages out to stone is he thinking about dropping a third town center potentially i think the timing for it isn't the worst but at the same time he doesn't really know what his enemy's up to because behind this, and this is the, the scary thing about not having a scout, is you never know what your enemy's up to. They could be doing something like moving to Castle Age. They could be going for a second town center themselves. And you just don't know. You don't know what the response is because if you get the response wrong, if you get the read wrong, you could be in trouble. And the third ram's going to be coming in now. Crackety. Really looking to put the pedal to the metal. Chukunu moving up as well. Numbers here not looking terrible for him. Town Center going to be firing off. C plus one ranged armor has come through now. Both of these players fighting it out with maximum upgrades on their archers. But at the same time, the archers, he's got a little bit of an attack move here. Not looking to focus down the Chukunu. Chukunu going to have to fall back. But remember, the battering ramps, they're just sitting here. Un unaffected by the archers almost. Villagers do move back and the battering ramps continue to cycle around. Over towards that west side of the base. And Crackety having an absolute field day against Beastie. Beastie looking for a way back into this game. Definitely going to have to spend all that extra stone that he had on military schools now that he's lost both. All right, Blacksmith coming down on the backside. More production. Added in. Another military school. Beastie. Oh, gosh, look at this. Look at look at the way Crackety's circling down towards his south side. He's not even going for the throat. He just knows. I can just take out the production. Just look for those military schools and you'll be fine. Look at the way that he's funneling all the units around the top side. He's just after the production. Give me the production. Let me have the production. That's all he wants. Battering Ram in the middle. Maiko down here. He's down to 40 health. 30 health. Manages to stay alive for a little bit longer. Villagers could be pulled to repair it up. Or he could just sack it. Let's see what decision he goes for. As these fills continue gathering up the gold on the front side. Towards the base of Crackety. Everything is, everything is chill. Everything is calm. Everyone's relaxed. Nobody's bothered. He's having a great time back there. On Beastie's side, though, he's down 20 population. Economic Poppy's managed to get back up on it. So, not doing terribly. The issue is going to be that military pop. Because now there's enough spearmen that even if you try and go for a spahi switch, it's not going to not gonna matter. And Beastie making a big mistake here not going for a meta. Honestly needs to get a meta ASAP. I'm, uh, I'm a little bit curious as to why he hasn't gone for a meta yet. We're at 14 minutes now. Still no meta on the field after that first one that came through. Because that meta is how you keep effective trades with these archers. Archer versus Chukunu, the Chukunu will always win. But you can break even if you've got that extra armor. It's all about that extra one armor. 
We can try and focus down that ram. It's got eight health on it. Still going to get some value here. As the fourth battering ram is going to be coming through now. And Beastie just kind of working his way. Crackity here working anti-clockwise, cycling through the base of Beastie like a grandfather clock right now. Beastie looks for his next Vizier point. Unsure what he went into, but I suspect probably uh, faster military military ac academy training speed. Maybe that's it. We do see a meta coming in. Okay, this could be it. This is what Beastie needs. Now, for anybody looking at China and saying, oh, they're still overpowered, just remember, Beastie hasn't had a meta this entire time. He had one. He sacrificed it immediately. It just went out. Now we see him on the range defense drums. This is what he wants. It's going to put the archers up to two ranged armor, which drops down the damage from the Chukunu from five to four and then down to three with that last point of, of armor. Exactly what he wants for those extended fights. This could be good for him, but look behind this. We talked about this before. He's got no idea what Crackity's up to, so Crackity could be going for a bit of a death push here. What's the death push, you might be asking? The death push is going to be a supervised veteran Chukunu and veteran, or rather, uh, balanced projectiles. If he can get both of those out and look at the resources, he could. There's the age up. Does he look to supervise them through straight away? There's plus two. He's supervising. This is it. And he puts the archery range back home, supervises it. It's coming in. It's coming in. This is, the, this is the Chinese death push right now. And look, Beastie knows it. Beastie knows he's got a fight right now. He wants it. He wants it so bad. But Crackity has to avoid the fight. He cannot fight right now. This is the Chinese timing attack. The castle timing attack. It's so beautiful because it absolutely destroys anything that is re relying on that armor. Like the meta that we see on the backside. Veterancy about to come through. Three, two, one. There it is. Veterancy now through for Crackity. He's going to have extra health, extra damage, as well as that plus two about to come through. And when it does, he's going to shred through everything. And still we hear more Chukunu coming in over from that east side. He's making his way towards the front line and Beastie going to be in such, such troubled water here. And it all goes back to that Barbican, that forward push. Beautiful timing coming out from Crackity here. The numbers here are way too great. There's no way he can keep up with this. The Chukunu are too strong at this point. He's going to overwhelm him. It doesn't matter. You can bring in a thousand Spahi. It's not going to matter because we've got a thousand arrows with the Spahi's name on it. Each one engraved individually. And Beastie's in a tough time right now. Down a thousand points up against Crackity's second alt account here. He's trying his best, but uh, unfortunately, the grandfather movement of Crackity is going to be cleaning up that production. Farms on the backside. A little wolf down here as well. What's a, what's a wolf doing in on the action? How long you been down here, Warwick? And now Crackity continues pushing down onto this south side. We'll bring back the UI so we can see exactly where Beastie's up, up to as more units continue funneling across the map. Now he's going for a bit of a flank. Beastie knows that this could be it. Spahi moving in. Just watch how quickly they evaporate these units. Look at the, oh, the second shot right there. They're taking out the spy on the second shot. He can just attack move these boys. He doesn't even need to really think about it. He needs to try and focus down that meta though. Beautiful kiting coming out from him. Working towards the front. Meta going to be going down. There it goes. And now on top of him, it's going to be a good game. There's no way Beastie holds this. The battering ram's just doing too much work. Crackity here. A very solid performance today. Looking good. Now remember, Beastie rank one, rank two, rank three. Go, go check him out, ladies and gentlemen. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description to where you can catch them both. But I think this just goes to show that you can't count out China. You can't count out a sneaky little one base attack like this. This grandfather strategy. I don't even know what you'd call a strategy like this, but I mean, you can see a very clear intent from Crackity here and he played it immaculately. Fellas, go check out Crackity here. I'll leave a link in the description. Go check out Beastie. I'll leave a link to him as well. They're both live on Twitch probably right now. Go say day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.